Hi, there are many types of vinyl records out there. There's coloured, there's cut out, there's 12 inch, there's 10 inch, there's 7 inch, even 5 inch. But today I'm going to talk to you about pitch discs. <laughs> Hi, I'm Norm and I'm here to talk about picture discs. Of course there's nothing wrong with your classic black vinyl, but there's something really appealing and uh, collectible about having the picture right there underneath the uh, grooves. Now I'm going to show you some of my more interesting picture discs that I think are interesting that you may or may not have seen before. But first I'm going to tell you a brief history on picture discs. Um, they've been around for quite a long time. The first one's been uh, 1920s. But I'm going to start from 1942 because uh, before then they were just made of cardboard which isn't great and they aren't really vinyl records. So from 1946 to 1947 there was a, a company called Vogue and that was in America and they made picture discs. These had an aluminium centre uh, and that was covered uh, by the picture and then a layer of vinyl. They played at 78 RPM. They actually sounded better than the uh, records that were around at the time that were made of shellac. The records were very popular at first, but unfortunately uh, Vogue went out of business after just two years. The picture discs that we're more familiar with uh, started to be available from 1970 with an album called Air Conditioning by a band called Curved Air. These records had a, a vinyl centre uh, covered by the picture and uh, then a thin layer of uh, plastic film. It seems that the outer layer on picture discs isn't actually covered in vinyl, it's just that plastic film. So uh, that that's why the sound quality on picture discs isn't quite as good as um, uh, an actual vinyl disc. Most picture discs come with a, a warning label to actually say that the uh, sound quality isn't as good. And also some picture discs are worse than others. But I'm not here to badmouth picture discs, I love them. Um, the sound quality might not be as good, but it's good enough for most people, I'd say. Definitely good enough for me. Uh, plus, they just look really cool. It's especially cool to get your favourite artwork on a disc by your favourite band. And of course, you, you're free to buy uh, a second one, a second version of the album that's just uh, on normal plain black vinyl. And then you can play that and maybe show the other one. So in this part of the video, I'm going to be showing you some of my more interesting vinyl uh, picture discs that, uh, well, I think are interesting. You may or may not have seen them before. If you're new to collecting vinyl, then this will be an eye opener for you to see the possibilities that are out there. If you're a seasoned collector, then this might give you some ideas for your next purchase. So I have a selection here, and the first one I'm going to show you is uh, Megadeth Countdown to Extinction. Now this was originally released in 1992 uh, as their fifth album. Um, slight change in direction musically, um, just shorter tracks, more melodic, um, following on the heels of uh, Metallica's uh, Black Album which was very successful a uh, year or two before. But it obviously worked out for them because this is their uh, highest charting album to date. Uh, it went to number two in the Billboard chart and it has this single uh, Symphony of Destruction on it. They've already uh, used some pretty cool artwork before this um, on their previous albums and this was the first one not to feature their mascot Vic Rattlehead on the front. Um, he's actually on the back as you can see there. Um, that's a pretty cool picture too. The cell that you can see in the background there is uh, featured in the video for Sweating Bullets which is a single from this album. Now, I've always loved this front cover. Um, I think the artwork is really stunning and uh, it's very good quality print, so it's really clear to look at. Now, this is actually a re release from uh, 2014 um, and you can actually buy this for around £30 uh, or 40 US dollars. Now, the guy responsible for this artwork is called uh, Hugh Zyme. He's been responsible for many album covers, uh, right from the beginning of the 70s right up to the present day. Um, he's also a musician himself, uh, most notably for his role in uh, Rush. And he also designed all their album covers and their logo. 
Right, so next I have this classic Slipknot album, uh, Subliminal Verses. This was released in 2004. Um, although mine was actually released in 2007 because this is a special edition. Uh, this is a double album. Um, it's in a cardboard sleeve. Uh, there's no uh, track listing on this one. A nice clear prints on these. Uh, I think all the pictures work pretty well. Apart from one of them, which I'm showing you now. Um, didn't think that one fitted so well, but the rest of them pretty cool. They're all the artworks taken from the uh, booklet you get in the CD, uh, so there's nothing new on here. It's a uh, limited edition. Um, it was only released in Germany, but it's, uh, you can buy this for about £60 or uh, that's about 80 US dollars. Right, okay, so uh, next one is Rage Against the Machine and their first album called Rage Against the Machine. Well, this album uses a very striking photo, um, quite a classic photo that people have seen a lot, I would have thought. Um, in case you don't know, it features a uh, Buddhist monk that set himself on fire um, as a protest against the government. Um, that goes with Rage Against the Machine's uh, political stance. Uh, so a very political band, which also comes out in their lyrics. The photo was taken by a guy called Malcolm Brown um, in 1963. My copy is a reissued remaster from 2012 uh, for the 20th anniversary of the release of this album. You can buy this for around £30, uh, 40 US dollars. I have the original CD here from uh, 1992. And as you can see, the uh, pictures are slightly different. Um, it's very much cropped on the CD as it was on the vinyl version originally. The back of this release is pretty much like the CD version. Um, you do get to see a bit more of the photo on the vinyl. And also while I'm showing you this, I'll, I'm going to show you a single release from the album. Uh, this is Bullet in the Head. And this was also released on coloured vinyl. Uh, well says called a vinyl but it's actually a picture of this um, and this is actually uh, showing you a blood splatter well the song is called bullet in the head so uh, yeah that looks pretty cool especially when it's uh, playing and the single version is pretty much the same sort of thing on the 12 inch version you get an extended version of uh, bullet in the head extra 30 seconds um, not much different otherwise so yeah this uh, next picture disc is uh one by curb dog uh, for the single dummy crusher it was released in 1994 uh, it was the only single that uh, actually charted for them in the uk i was surprised to learn that the uh, they didn't have any success in the us unfortunately uh, especially because their sound was uh, very much grunge and um their singles are really great uh also, their album was produced by Jack Endino, um, and he was responsible for albums by uh, Nirvana, Mudhoney, and Soundgarden. Now, this design, you may guess, is uh, to celebrate their Irish roots, uh, particularly like the B-side. I think that's a great design, really clear, stands out. And talking of the B-sides, um, it actually has uh, two covers of tracks on this album. Um, we have Mr. Clean, which is a Paul Weller song, and uh, Don't Stand in Line by Palehead. This one comes in a clear sleeve, as you can see, with a cardboard insert. Unfortunately, they were only around for two albums, and then they split. But uh, for fans, it was uh, a couple of years ago, uh, they got back together for a gig, and they actually uh, released a live album with a new song on it. You should really have a listen to these. Um, may like them uh, look out for the albums curb dog and on the turn and uh, this is available for around five, five pounds or uh, seven dollars and this time i have a nirvana single uh, it's called come as you are taken from the album never mind this was released in 1992 and i actually uh, purchased this at the time the uk version was released with either a, uh, a clear rim or a black rim also, the UK version had a uh, printed cardboard cover, but this is the German release. 
Uh, only came with a black rim and there was no cardboard cover, just this clear sleeve. Although this version has got a different picture on the back to the uh, UK one. As you can see on the front, it's got a pretty cool design. Um, bright blue sperm there swimming into the egg, which seems to contain Nirvana. And they're looking really happy about that. The track listing is slightly different on the UK version and the German version. Um, you've got Drain You Live on this one, and the UK version has School Live. The picture used uh, is quite different to the 7 inch version of the single. As you can see, it's along the same lines but quite different. And you can buy this for £15 or uh, 20, around $20. Okay, so the next one is Born to Raise Hell by Motorhead featuring Ice-T and Whitfield Crane. This song was originally featured on Motorhead's album Bastards from 1983 and it just had Lemmy on the vocals. It was then re-recorded for the Airhead soundtrack and released as 12 inch. Lemmy actually has a cameo in the film Airheads and it starred uh, Adam Sandler and Brendan Fraser. As you can see on the A side it features Lemmy and uh, Whitfield Crane Nice T and then on the B side you've got Brendan Fraser and he's on his bike there in the film and you've got three other screenshots from the film. Uh, this one comes in a clear sleeve with a printed cardboard insert. If you haven't heard this and you're into rock then you really should have a listen it's a great track you don't really hear it around very often i don't know why because it's amazing this is available for around 25 pound 35 dollars now for me this one is what pitch this were made for take a look at that now obviously if you like batman you're going to think this is awesome this is uh, the single Bat Dance by Prince, which was recorded for the soundtrack for the Batman film from 1989, made by Tim Burton and uh, starring Michael Keaton. On the back, you've got another logo, just the text version this time, but again, it looks really nice. And the B-side has a track called 200 Balloons, which was actually recorded for the soundtrack but uh, it doesn't actually appear on the soundtrack, so you don't get it on this release. This one came in uh, just a clear plastic sleeve, uh, no card insert. Um, you can get this for about £20, uh, 25 US dollars. And finally, this is my newest purchase. I actually brought this a few days ago. And it's for the Spider-Man soundtrack, uh, Spider-Man Homecoming. And I love this picture, I've seen it as a poster before I saw the vinyl and it's been cropped down and it just worked perfectly, um, especially with the uh, circles there. I mean it's just like it was made for vinyl I think. Stunning picture, um, actually features a selection of tracks from uh, the soundtrack to the film. It's by Michael Giacchino. The artwork is by Martin Anson. It includes the reworking of the old Spider-Man theme tune from uh, the old cartoon series that used to be on TV, which is awesome. Uh, you hear it in the film right at the very start. And this is currently available for around £15 or 20 US dollars. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed my video and it's given me some ideas for something to go and purchase. So thank you for watching and please subscribe and hope to see you again soon.